Hello, it is Jay Foss, and I am back with another Hero of the Month overview. This is Arfanius. He is the June 2022 Hero of the Month. And I'll go through some of his strengths and weaknesses and hopefully help you decide if he fits your roster for uh, ascending to max level. So he is a rogue. That is, in my opinion, one of the better classes. And not ultra competitive. It's relatively competitive, but not crazy. Um, resist health steal. Um, not super valuable, but there are a few heroes that do it. And plus 30% attack when their mana is reduced. This is the what used to be called the mana cut or direct mana reduction. So, Liju, Leonidas, um, heroes like that. So, the passives are not earth shattering, but they're there and every little bit helps, right? So, Getting into the stats amongst the purple five stars, and if you haven't seen my reviews before, if a hero has a costume, I count it as three. So their base value as one, the regular version with the costume but not wearing it, or the costume wearing it. So of the 72 purple five stars, and this is updated with the solstice uh, summons, uh, his attack ranks 19th, so pretty good of 72, good attack. You'd want that for a sniper. Uh, his defense ranks 36, so dead middle. And his health is uh, in the middle. So honestly, a pretty good split for an attacking hero. Um, good attack, average defense, average health, so no... Real weakness, but you have a slight weight to where you'd want it, which is the attack. So getting into the sniper damage, and this is interesting. Um, 360 the target, but it goes up to 550. So let's start with the 360 because that's easiest. 360 is low. Um... If you put in the damage equation, I'm looking for a comparison here, so give me a sec. Uh, it's maybe 2% better than Kiona. Kiona is one of the first hero of the month's purple. Uh, sort of looks like a ninja before there was ninjas. Uh, so it's sort of in that range. It would be... Um, a little bit, uh, maybe 13 to 15% less than regular Sartana. Uh, but that, again, is at the lower end if there is no mana on the target. So if you take the middle of this, it's pretty solid um, for fast snipe. Um, you're looking at the middle, let's say... Five, let's just say 460-ish. Then, you know, you're going to have pretty good damage. Um, but not a bad baseline. Um, when you get to the 550, which would be the max, the best case scenario, it's very good for upfront damage for purple snipers. It would be behind only Dark Lord. And without question, Dark Lord's the, in my opinion, uh, the best purple sniper right now. Uh, at least if you're putting a focus on damage um then dark lord would be there because dark lord has more fun and then but crazy potential with dot um so this this special typically it, it it depends on the hero but a lot of times when you're playing and the hero like arfanius is on defense he's more likely to get a higher value on defense generally however and this is a good counter argument someone brought up to me that if you're on offense, you can choose, and that is completely fair. You can choose. You can choose someone with the highest mana that you want to hit to get higher damage, but a lot of times when you're using snipers, you kind of want to be the kill shot, and you're kind of locked in on who you want to hit with it. So I do think this is going to get good overall damage. It's good speed at fast speed, obviously, and a good solid 
hero of the month. I think what sort of sets him apart a little bit is this 75% chance to dodge for three turns. There are a lot of fast defenses out there right now, and I know a lot of them are no fod tanks, and you can't really use purple against no fod, but that 75 chance... 75% chance to dodge is legit in terms of his survival, and the rogue class obviously helps. Um, this, to me, would put him ahead of a hero like Sartana costume, in my opinion. Um, I think if he didn't have this, or he had a weaker thing for his secondary effect, then, yeah, a good spirited debate. But to have this for three turns, 75% dodge... I think that's a very, very cool, especially for Hero of the Month, secondary effect that I think is noticed, but I think when players use him on offense, it's going to be one of those things where they realize, wow, that is a really impactful secondary effect. So in terms of overall damage, I think on offense, you're probably going to come out in the sort of average range in terms of, it's hard to say based on how you play offense and your setup and who fires first versus last but i think you're going to come out in the sort of average range now if you have a team and i'm having trouble conceptualizing what that team would be but if you have a team to where you can always pick for him to hit the one with the highest mana of the five then yeah you're going to get really good damage but um yeah so i'd that's my feelings on the damage. I love the secondary effect. The link always helps. Um, I wouldn't put this as the highest priority link, but it helps. And obviously, if you're a mono player or even a 3-2 player, this is a valuable link to have. Um, sort of discussing the other areas, I don't really see much Titan utility unless he's your high attack stat hero. And he potentially could be if you're free to play or cheat to play. Where I really do like this hero, and I think it'll be a standout, is Bloody Battle. So to get, and I know he's a sniper, and I know snipers are sort of not in right now, especially defensively, but they're used a little more offensively right now at the highest tiers. Uh, Bloody Battle really intrigues me with fast speed, decent damage, a dodge... And I think this dodge is the most underrated part of his special because that's really going to help um, in terms of making a comeback. Um, you know, you get your tiles a little bit late. Excuse me. You get your tiles a little bit late. Um, and a hero like this may allow you to come back uh, later in the match with that dodge. So love that, love that secondary effect. Uh, so bloody battle... I think is under the radar between the rogue class, the dodge, fast speed, decent damage. You know, he's going to be average-ish in buff and not really a big factor in uh, rush. And unless he's your high tile spot on the Titan, then uh, probably not a huge factor on the Titan either. I will mention, and I'm always looking for really obscure synergy, especially before I do this video, a video like this, and... I did see someone say, like, something to the effect of, now I can use Zoc. And I thought it was really clever. I'm sorry, I don't remember who said it. If you if someone puts it in the comments, I'll add his name to the description, or her name to the description. But, yeah, I thought that was a cool synergy. You know, if you're able to get Zoc and Arfanius up, you hit them first with Zoc. And now they have basically Mindless. Uh, and then their mana's full, or higher, and then he hits for more. So I thought that was an interesting synergy and there'll be more synergies that uh emerge with this guy for sure so um hero of the month i think it's pretty solid honestly uh it's nothing like super exciting um i'm not gonna jump out of my seat and yell and go to the liquor store if i get him but um i'll do a little fist pump and that's sort of how i feel about him for most rosters he's going to be useful he's going to be serviceable on offense for rosters and even less he's going to be serviceable on defense and as i mentioned his defense and hp are average but with 
basically stacking dodge between the class and the special skill. Uh, if you're below mid-level, then potentially even tank. I do think he's relatively hard to fit in on defense, especially in a purple tank era. But if we move on from purple tank era, then you may see his versatility spread out um, to be to various positions. Um, typically, snipers play on the wing, and certainly he could do that. He's not as deadly as some of the other uh, multi-hitters you could put a flank and wing. But overall, a very solid hero that, unless you're spending hundreds of dollars a month, is probably one you want to level. Um, I would be, for the, most of the player base, I would be happy uh, to pick him up and add to your purple stack. And again, outside of Dark Lord, Dark Lord to me is the A number one purple snipe. Like, it's not close. There are some ones that do some gimmicks, like the new season five, Kans Kanshu, and there's others that offer good 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 utility like Lepiota but if you're looking in my opinion just going through the snipers I'd rather do Arfanius over any of the versions of Dom Domitia or Domita however you'd like to say it and quite honestly I would put, do him above uh, the regular version of Cage Brado I'd do him ahead of Kiona um, and I'd do him above all versions of Sartana and honestly, probably Sashat. Um, one of Sashat's biggest appeals to me was Bloody Battle and the Dispel, and it depends how many Dispels you have, but um, just stat-wise, I think for a lot of players, this will replace Sashat on whatever team they're running. So, not bad. I hope everyone who watches this that wants him gets him. And, um, yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what teams you use them on. I know there's some synergies I'm probably missing, uh, like the Clever Zock one. But, yeah, let me know. Good luck with your summons.